Touchline Y254 is the show. It is all about the sports this beautiful afternoon on this 27th of February. Saturday afternoon, we are giving you all the updates when it comes to matters sports. Just right now, everything that is happening at the moment, we're just going to give you an update on some of the matches that will be coming your way this afternoon when it comes to rugby. We've got uh, Cabras Sugar, who are uh, just the winners of the Cut and Razor, the Sisimuka Charity Cup, where they beat Harlequins. They will be kicking off their Kenya Cup game against most. That is Masinde Muliro University at uh, 3 p.m. at the Kakamega Showground. And then KCB will be playing home to Stratmolios at the KCB Sports Club of Waraka in Thika Road from 3 p.m. We've got a double header in Nakuru Menengai Oilers will be playing Kenya Harlequins at 2 p.m. And then at 4 p.m. will be top friend Nakuru versus the Black Blood of Kenyatta University. And most of the updates from the Madrid Sevens will be coming away here on the touchline. Let's go on with the show. It is time for Fan Zone. And still, I'm with the crew. Sami Gitai is there and also Eric Aganya. And it is also another Saturday afternoon which I have to throw it out there. What do you expect this afternoon? <laughs> it is an what, early kickoff. What what we expect and uh, what we wish for are two different things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today my wish will yeah. be what, what do you wish for? Oh, yes, my yeah. wish will be West Ham to beat Man City. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, I, I think that will be a tall order. Mm. Uh, but it will be a very interesting match. I would like to see how uh, both managers approach the match uh, because I believe uh, uh, David Moyes. Uh, will approach it the way he has approached uh, the match against Totem, sit back mm -hmm. and uh, uh, wait to, 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 to hit Man City on the counter with the likes of uh, Antonio and uh, Lingard, who is also doing very well, <laughs> uh, having uh, gone there on loan. Yes. Uh, so it will be interesting to watch. Well, uh, we, 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 we had a very huge conversation when it comes to Manchester City in the Champions League and how they are performing and the team that they are having at the moment. But... You can also not take away what David Moyes has done with West Ham currently. Because out of the blues, they are now fighting for a top four position. And there's a big possibility that this West Ham team can actually play Champions League next season. Yeah. And uh, uh, last month, I think, uh, to me, uh, I could have given him the, 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 the coach of the month. Yes. Uh, despite the fact that it was given to, to Guardiola. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could have given him because, uh, basing on the resources that he had mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of players he had, he doesn't have a big squad like Man City. He doesn't have the resources that Man City has. Yes. And uh, David Moyes has a way of working with these mid-table teams. I uh, remember even when he was at Everton, he converted Everton to a top six team. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's doing the same against. Uh, 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 he's doing the same at, at West Ham. His main uh, 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 achievement at West Ham is uh, him being able to lock the defense. Uh -huh. They are winning one. Nil. A disciplined yes. defense. Yes, he has drilled his defense to uh -huh. a point that they're very disciplined. Tactically, they know how to retreat. They know how to organize themselves, and uh, he's doing a, b a beautiful job. Well. West Ham you know, with uh, David Moyes out of nowhere. No one expected them to come off and be in this game at the moment. Manchester City now, I think, on 17 games unbeaten and they are playing really, really very well. And uh, you saw how West Ham played. Uh, I think it was the FA Cup against Manchester United. Mm. As Eric has talked about their disciplined defence and oiled defence and how they were playing. But now... They are playing a Man City side that is capable of unlocking them. Yeah. Where do you think the match will be won? First of all, I, I, I need to say, I uh, start out there, that actually mm. West Ham have not trailed in the first half this season. Uh -huh. So I guess Manchester City will be coming into this match and thinking that we need to be patient here. It's not going to happen that quickly. And talking about what David Moyes has done to the team, actually, you look at the signings they've made so far. Thomas mm. Suchek, Vladimir Kufal at the back. He also brought in a loan deal uh, for Michael Dawson, mm -hmm. who is now part of that defense that you're talking about, keeping clean sheets. Yeah. And Jesse Lingard has been a revelation to that team. He also what they did against Spurs on Sunday and mm -hmm. actually had a very wonderful celebration in there with the likes of Declan Rice in the team. So for Manchester City coming to this one, I guess the midfield is going to at least 
try and find a way where they're going to lock out Declan Rice and mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Suchek from the game because they've been like the engines of the team and they've been really providing the balls to either Bowen, you bring yes. it to Lingard, to bring it to Antonio. So maybe I expect a guy like Rodri to have a very big game in this match, mm -hmm. but I really don't find a way where West Ham are going to win this one. Yeah. I know it ended in a one all in the first leg, but this one against Manchester City right now, they're looking at Nick King. If we win this game, we are on a 20-point <laughs> run. So I, I, I think, so I think uh, yeah. uh, Declan Rice should be taught how to dance. <laughs> what yeah, was that he was doing? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I think uh, you said that uh, uh, Manchester City are going to come into the game uh, uh, patient, uh, thinking that they need to take time. Uh, uh, I would like to disagree. Mm -hmm. Because if they do that, mm -hmm. and uh, David Moyes' team will grow, Confident. The game confident. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what Guardiola is going to come in, he's going to do the Arsenal thing. Come Front on, hit them very fast. Yeah, okay. if, I, if, I, if I hit you very fast, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you'll be disorganized. Yeah. Because you're used to taking, you saw what, Manchester, what they did to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. They were comfortable. Mm -hmm. They pushed them 90, comfortable. Mm -hmm. We're okay. Yes. Uh, we, we know how to do this thing. Yeah. We will defend. We'll yeah. sit patient. Mm -hmm. So Guardiola is going to throw them out of their game. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, you see the approach today will be, Come in, bring in very pacey uh, uh, wingers uh, and uh, be aggressive the first 10 minutes yeah. will determine. Because if West Ham settles in the game, then it will be a draw. And oh. then there's that kid that uh, Manchester United left uh, to go on loan to West Ham and it seems like he rejuvenated a West Ham midfield, Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard mm -hmm. uh, is actually doing well. Uh, and uh, if you look at him being at Manchester United uh, before Sosja and before, he had some problems, uh, family problems. Mm, yeah. uh, they affected his form. Mm. But before then, he's, he had scored some crucial goals for, for Manchester United. I think uh, uh, he, he was not sent on loan because he was bad, mm. uh, but uh, uh, because in the midfield, they, uh, Manchester yeah, United better had better options. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's no way you'd put uh, Bruno Fernandes on bench. Yeah. Have him play yeah. the same thing that is uh, 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 happening to Van de Beek. Mm -hmm. Not that Van de Beek is bad, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the people are being put there, like Bruno Fernandes, yeah, they're doing a job. beautiful job. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is a kid who is uh, enjoying himself now at West Ham, yeah. uh -huh. he's having fun, yeah. no pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's playing his best football. And uh, if he continues like that, uh, then he, he, he may send them to the Champions League. <laughs> yeah, I may actually do that because yeah. it's uh, there's a big possibility that West Ham can actually go ahead and play at the Champions League next season in the matches as they are playing so far. But also, let, let's finish with that one, Manchester City, West Ham. Three points for Man City? Yeah, I think uh, Man City will, will win it narrowly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think it's also going to be a Manchester yeah. City win right now. Yeah. But again, talking about Lingard, I think it was good that he actually came in and scored immediately and <laughs> Samo got himself into the groove. And now you can see even a guy like Pablo Fornals, who we barely know, he speaks English and yeah. he's really having a very good time with Jesse Lingard with that team. He looks really, really good. Yeah. And to even think that the, the other guys that are getting involved, also the, the likes of Jared Bowen, mm -hmm. they seem to have a very good connection. And actually, Jesse Lingard is being looked at a guy that maybe could even be on that plane to the Euros with mm -hmm. England, doing how Gareth Southgate loves him. Well, big matches that will be coming away. They have already said that it will be three points for Manchester City. It will be an early kickoff for Manchester City against the Hammers West Ham. But we have also got some other three matches that will be coming your way at 6 p.m. We've got also West Bromwich Albion playing home to Brighton and then Leeds will be playing home to Aston Villa, the Elan Road, and then we'll be finishing off the day with Newcastle versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. So those are the fixtures for today. And we'll, let's talk also about uh, West Bromwich Albion versus Brighton Have Just uh, was it last week, uh, West Bromwich, Sam Allarda is coming on with his big boy mentality and had a draw with uh, Manchester United. It was likely that he was actually even going with the one uh, with three points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the worst games that Manchester United has played yeah. uh, was that one actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Big yeah. Sam has brought in some some confidence into uh -huh. the team, and last weekend uh, they also drew yeah, with Burnley. and uh, with Burnley, yeah. and they should have uh, gotten the three points because uh, they, they they had some good chances. Uh, but today I'll I'll put my money on Brighton. Mm -hmm. uh, Brighton have the capability of knocking the ball around. Yeah. Uh, they have ca the capability of being patient yeah. and uh, eventually uh, they will be able 
to 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 harm West Brom. Mm -hmm. So today I, I'll put my money on 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 Brighton. On Brighton. Yeah, and actually looking at that West Brom game mm -hmm. when they played against Burnley, they had ten men for almost sixty minutes in the game, and yeah. Sam Allardyce actually mentioned it as one of the best games he's seen from mm -hmm. ten men uh, yeah. in that game. So yeah. it actually shows the kind of belief that is brought into the team mm -hmm. and of course defensively they did a wonderful job of, of course having considered only a goal against manchester united and not considered against burnley it was mm -hmm. good for them but then against brighton you were talking about brighton being that one side that plays some very exciting football but they don't have that kind of a cutting edge or quality out front when you have neil mope you have connolly expect maybe better from them and think that's the thing that is lacking from them so if we get any sharpness from those guys then maybe they could have a stroll in the park so that one will be going brighton west brom or a draw in that one i'll give it to to, to brighton myself brighton mm. i think uh, six matches or seven matches they have only lost once and they had a run of six matches without losing at any moment they are actually very good for you. Sami, where do you place I, your I, I actually don't see many goals in this game, so I'm going to go with an under 2.5. <laughs> <laughs> under 2.5 there. And then a big one that will be coming at 8.30 now will be Leeds United versus Aston Villa. Aston Villa without Jack Grealish. Uh, fireworks. Mm -hmm. Fireworks because uh, Leeds don't know how to defend. Mm -hmm. They come to you. Yeah. And they're going to take that game to, 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 to Aston Villa. And it's a, it's, it's a tragedy for Aston Villa uh, because uh, the lack of Jack Grealish uh, takes away something that they ha they're very good at, yeah. the counter. Mm -hmm. They're very good at hitting you on the counter. Yes. And uh, Grealish is capable of opening those spaces in the defense. And uh, today, by the fact that he will not be there, uh, gives uh, Leeds an, uh, an edge over them. Because now Leeds will be able to, to do wonders. Mm -hmm. But uh, Aston Villa, will they be able to counter leads? Because if you are able to hit leads on the counter, you'll score. Mm -hmm. uh, because they come, all of them. Yeah. Uh, they come, all of them, and uh, they all only know how to attack. Yeah. They will attack. Uh, one th one good thing I like about the leads team is that uh, uh, I think the manager has put into them. Even if you even if you concede, don't worry. Yeah. We will score. And uh, I saw I saw it against Arsenal. They considered mm. four, and uh, they could still attack. Yeah. And they eventually they got two. Okay. And if uh, if they had been given another ten minutes, they could have got another two. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that one, I think, I'm seeing a game that will have uh, goals, mm -hmm. and uh, Leeds uh, will carry the day. Aston Villa without Jack Grealish, will it be a blow for them in that midfield going forward? Yeah, actually, that was the big question because you're looking at both teams. They're actually lacking some key figures in the middle of the pack. You talk about Leeds United not having Calvin Phillips and then Jack Grealish miss, missing for Aston Villa. I think the big question was who is going to miss the other the most. And I think the answer is that Aston Villa are going to miss Jack Grealish. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to Dean Smith talking about how they're going to approach this game. He talked about the young lads in that team also living up to the hype. You talk about guys like Anwar El Ghazi, who we saw him on a bit of a good run, yeah. only that he was at least taken out of the team. And then you have guys like Traore, also in that team, the cousin to Lasina Traore, who mm -hmm. plays at Ajax. He's a very good player. So maybe they'll be looking at that and feeling like this guy should take the opportunity and at least bring the game to Leeds United. Mm -hmm. But again, talking about Leeds United, I guess they've received lots of a kind of a backlash by many people and I've never seen that in from a team that has just got promotion to the to the league that they actually tend but they still get huge slack for conceding lots of goals where they're still winning mm -hmm. so I credit Marcelo Bielsa for the kind of football that they're playing but actually it's good to realize that they've not had their best defenses they actually have some injuries in that team we talk about Robin Koch, Diego Oriente being in journey that team so it's going to be an exciting match and I am looking at Patrick Bamford and feeling that he, he should actually take this game and he scored a hat-trick in the opening leg mm -hmm. against Aston Villa so maybe this could be another opportunity for him. Wow. Prediction quickly for that one. For you, you said a lot of goals, yeah. but <laughs> in favour <laughs> in favor of Leeds. In favour of Leeds. That's Leeds something. Of Leeds. Yeah, of course, Leeds United will win by 3+. plus. 3+. Plus. Yeah. And then we finish off today's match day with Newcastle playing home to Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's also another big game in the, that mid-table clash. Yeah, it's a, it's a big game in the mid-table. And you see that uh, this season, uh, Wolves have, uh, have suffered one thing. Uh, uh, they are not scoring. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, because they lost Jota to, 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 to Liverpool mm -hmm. and then they lost Jimenez to injury. To injury. Uh, that one has really affected them. Uh, and you see that uh, the games they could have finished off, uh, they're not doing uh, they're not doing that. Uh, but today I will also uh, want to believe that um, coming from last weekend, mm -hmm. uh, they're a little bit high in confidence. Yes. And uh, I would like to believe that uh, they, they will win this against Newcastle. Yeah, so I think the pressure is on Newcastle right now because they, ca they can actually feel Fulham on their, back, on, their, on their backs because they are only three points behind them. And mm -hmm. for Newcastle, they have not been on a good run ever since even Callum Wilson got injured. They have actually not been scoring goals. And you look at the approach that is made in that team, playing with five at the back, looks too defensive. They don't look like a team that could spring even five passes in the game. Mm -hmm. But again, talking about Wolves, I think it was a good victory for them against Leeds United last Friday. And a guy like Chaore, whom we've not been seeing for a while, came with a very wonderful goal. And you could understand why he celebrated it the way he did. Yeah. And the positive update is that Nuno Espirito Santo came with an update that actually we might see Raul Jimenez back this season. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really positive news for, for the team. And so looking at their last few games, Wolves have actually tried to defend at least. They have not been conceding that much. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is a game you look at and think it's going to be low scoring again but Wolves might actually win it. Well, a big one there for Wolves going to play away to Newcastle United. Let's just have a look at the table there, the English Premier League table, as it looks so far. And uh, if we'll just be looking at it at the moment, Manchester City are comfortably 10 points clear after 25 matches that they have played Manchester United following their second with 49 from the 25 matches that have been played so far. The only teams with a game in hand have got to be Everton and Tottenham. But uh, when we were talking about uh, that uh, top four clash, and then you look at uh, West Ham there with 45 points and Chelsea behind with uh, 43 points. And also we'll be talking about the big one game that will be coming there tomorrow between Chelsea versus Manchester United and then Liverpool have dropped all the way to position six with the 40 points at the moment. That is 19 points behind Manchester City. Just comfortably, they have comfortably said they're we are not going title. to defend this uh, title. Uh, they're, 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 they're out of the title and uh, the objective this season will be to, to, to come back to the top four yes. and uh, play Champions League football uh, next season. Okay. Uh, but um, they have more problems than uh, Klopp will love to admit. One, uh, they have players whose uh, contracts are coming to an end, like Wayne Adam, mm -hmm. who's, uh, who's not focused, uh, he's thinking of Barcelona. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to sort that. And then they have an aging squad also. You realize that uh, 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 their, their average age is ranging between 28 and 29. That's too high. For, for, for a team. And then uh, secondly, thirdly, they have uh, players who have also achieved everything with Liverpool. I've won the Champions League with Liverpool. I've won the Premier League with Liverpool. So what am I doing here? Yeah. I want a new challenge. They have Mo Salah, uh, yeah. who love to get a new challenge. They have uh, Sadio Mane. Uh, if Madrid comes knocking, and uh, those uh, uh, he would comfortably rush yeah. to Madrid. Uh, so I think this season, there's more beating for Liverpool. More, mm. more, yeah, there's, there's more there's misery. Yeah, there's, there's, there's there's more, they, they'll be beaten uh, at least uh, twice. Con <laughs> considering also that he, he plays heavy metal football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with that metal age, football, heavy yeah. metal football, uh, uh, with that age, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he may not... Uh, he will, I think he will reach a point whereby he'll put his money on the Champions League. Yeah. yeah, and I guess it's the same situation you saw it with Borussia Dortmund and the same trajectory where they were doing very well in the Champions League, won even the Bundesliga, but then it came a time when all the guys are tired and they've been mm. run over. And mm. the same case to what is happening right now, going into their 60th season in, in Liverpool, mm -hmm. look at the guys that have been consistently asked to perform at a high level, it reaches a point where it can happen anymore and they need to go out. And, and this, then, this, and this looks like a pattern because it happened to him with Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then now, oh, to couple it all with Liverpool, the injuries are so many. Mm. And, uh, and I saw it uh, uh, when Henderson uh, got injured. Yes. Uh, you could see it on the faces of, uh, of, of, of the players that uh, our captain is down. Yeah. So everybody uh, is down. 
uh, because you see that uh, uh, what what has been the main problem is that uh, uh, upon the injury of the central defense, mm -hmm. uh, they had to push their midfield enforcers back, back to and that is Fabinho and uh, and Henderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you find that uh, now these people when they were pushed back, uh, now that enforcement in the midfield to support the attack yeah, uh, uh, came down. Yeah. Now the guy who had pushed back is now not there. Mm -hmm. So you have two problems. Your problem whereby you don't have an enforcer mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have a defender. Mm -hmm. Because Anderson, uh, uh, actually, if you look at uh, uh, since Van Dijk uh, got injured, they haven't conceded that much. Mm -hmm. But they haven't scored many goals. Many goals. You see, because yeah. their midfield enforcers had come backwards. Yeah. And uh, when Adam will not do a job that uh, Fabinho will do, mm -hmm. uh, or, or Anderson could have done, there's that pass that Anderson will give. Mm -hmm. uh, when Adam may not give that pass. And uh, that is their main problem. Now, with Anderson now again injured, Ten weeks uh, they, 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 they have a big problem. Yeah. Because and who the comes there? Now, they, they'll be playing Sheffield. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of a shock can happen this weekend? Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know, the last time I was here, I was talking about Everton not having won at Anfield since 1999. And I felt like this yeah. is the perfect opportunity, they should go for it. Yeah. Now you're talking about Sheffield United, the worst team in the league so far. Yeah. I think for Jürgen Klopp, also, it makes it a little bit easier now that he's missing two defenders. Mm -hmm. He'll actually now play two centre-backs. Yeah. That now that Fabinho and Henderson are out, maybe you're talking about a situation where you'll see Ben Davies. You see Ozan Kabak or even Rhys Williams, who's now back into the team. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know about the situation about the goalkeeper, Alisson, mm -hmm. because we heard about that tragic news to his father. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know whether he's going to start. It's going to be a huge surprise if he does. Yeah. So maybe you're talking about Adrian now getting back into the team. Yeah. And there was that talk about Thiago <laughs> being a guy who slows down that midfield. Uh -huh. From hard metal... They called it lift music. <laughs> 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 That's a big one, eh? Yeah, and understandably so because they've yes. lost their zip really. Mm -hmm. And that was the case about Jürgen Klopp not utilizing his central defenders and bringing yeah. back the midfielders yeah. at the back. You'll yeah. end up losing four players in the team and there is no output forward. Yeah. And I guess also you question about Salah and Mane because Salah has actually scored a goal in only four matches. In the last four matches, he's only scored a goal. Firmino doesn't look to be scoring the goals. I think the positive news is that Jota will be back yeah. anytime soon. Well, it's a big one there for Liverpool as they go to play Sheffield United. Uh, just uh, some updates coming your way is that Sergio Aguero will be starting for Manchester City against West Ham this afternoon. There's been actually a long time without seeing uh, Sergio Aguero in the Manchester City lineup. But let's go on to the feature match of the weekend, and that match will be Chelsea playing home to Manchester United at the Stamford Bridge. It's another, another big one for these two managers and also for these two sides this weekend. Uh, it's, a, it's a big test uh, for, 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 for Chelsea. Uh, now their manager is able to test himself. He's done it with Atletico. Now everybody's looking at it. If you beat Manchester United, yeah. uh, then we can start talking about you and saying, OK, uh, you can do a better job. Yes. And uh, for Manchester United, they would like to cement their, pos their second position. Okay. And if they lose this game, uh, they, that will be a big dent to their second position. Uh, and I, I want to believe the two managers are so different in their approach, in their system of play uh, because you have Tuchel who believes in uh, we possess, mm -hmm. we pass it around and uh, we will be able to create chances uh, but we do it uh, faster. Yes. Uh, we have uh, a soldier who believes that um, we can hit you on the counter. Yeah. We allow you to have the ball. When you come we have very fast wingers or uh, when we get the ball uh, we hit you on the counter mm -hmm. and uh, i believe the first thing that you shall will do uh, will be to take uh, bruno fernandez out of the game mm -hmm. uh, bruno fernandez out of the game to mark him out of the game maybe by giving kante to him yeah. uh, the moment he's marked out of the game without paul pogba in that midfield uh, without S scott mctomney then manchester united will be in trouble yeah. But if they allow Bruno Fernandes to pull the strings, uh, then we know the kind of balls he can give to Rashford. Yes. And you remember uh, uh, last time, last season, actually, uh, uh, Ch Chelsea lost 4-0 at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. uh, not because Chelsea played poorly, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, United took its chances. Yeah. When they get that one chance from the midfield, they have players who can get that ball from the midfield yeah. and uh, hit it uh, uh, to the count to to the the, to on the counter. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it would be an interesting match again because we are seeing two brilliant strikers uh, from both ends. We have Cavani mm -hmm. uh, off the ball, very brilliant movement. And we have Giroud on the other side. Strikers who are in their 30s yeah. and who are doing brilliant things. Uh, Giroud off the ball, the movement is good. Yeah. And he has the capability to hold the ball mm -hmm. and bring the others into the game. Yeah. W w one thing is um, Manchester United... They seem confident playing away matches because mm. that's their best record so far. I think 19 matches unbeaten when they are on the road. And this one will be playing onto their minds when they go on to play Chelsea. They just thrashed Social at 4 0 away, played dull at home. Now they're heading to Stamford Bridge. I guess that, that has been the situation with many away teams that actually we have over 60% of away teams getting victories and that maybe could be alluded to the fact that we don't have fans in the stadium. Mm -hmm. But again, I love what actually Erika said in there but by just mentioning Cavani mm -hmm. because it seems that he has actually gotten martial out of that team. <laughs> and, I did that, and that's really <laughs> not a for him. Yeah, he's yeah. built out martial from that team. Mm -hmm. and it was going to be a big question whether Martial would score against Sociedad, of which he didn't, and mm -hmm. that really meant that maybe he has lost his place against uh, playing against Chelsea. But again, talking about the approach, it's going to be down to that because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer look at the matches he's played against the big boys, yeah. drew nil nil with Chelsea in the first leg, mm -hmm. drew nil nil again with Arsenal. All these performances have looked dull, and it seems like he's getting into the match and getting that mentality that we shouldn't lose this game rather than we are going to win this game. Yeah. So maybe I, I expect Manchester United not to at least sit back because every time we give Chelsea the opportunity to do that, they're still going to play that kind of a possession game where they mm -hmm. are ranking over 69% passes and possession. Mm -hmm. They're still going to find a way and score against you. So maybe this is a challenge to Thomas Tuchel if Manchester United are going to play attacking football. Yeah. But again, I also think it's going to be an interesting thing to see what happens in their defence. Yeah. We saw what the press by Athletic Madrid can do to Mendy and that goal. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's going to be interesting to see the footwork by Edward Mendy in that goal. Yeah. Uh, it was very key the last time they met out. But then again, you brought about uh, two key strikers to, to, to watch in that game, that is Cavani. This other side, we are going to see Oliver Giroud coming in. And you see Thomas, uh, the new coach of Chelsea also, I think he's coming in and is now calling on experience also. Some of the experienced players coming onto the side, the likes of Kante coming onto the midfield, Alonso. Rudiger Alonso. returning, <laughs> Alonso also. Brought in Alonso, yeah. yeah. So that is the kind of lineup you could expect from Chelsea yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, we, we, we expect that. Eh? And what Manchester United uh, is going to bank on is going to bank on uh, uh, Chelsea having more attacking players. And, uh, and what. what, what uh, what Olegana is going to do tomorrow, uh, to, to, tomorrow will be uh, to have uh, Rashford waiting. Mm -hmm. Come and attack, we hit you one counter, yeah. yes. a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Manchester United can be able to take their chances, yeah. uh, then they, they, they'll come out of uh, Stanford Bridge with, with points. Yeah. Uh, but if they don't do that, the problem with sitting back, as he had said, is that uh, you not only concede, uh, uh, but you will make a mistake and even have an own goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're adding pressure, you know, you're conceding pressure. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and Manchester United wouldn't want to do that. And uh, what I know again, what will happen tomorrow, and so uh, has been able to specialize in that. Uh, if you looked at the game against uh, Liverpool, mm -hmm. the draw against Liverpool, and even the, the win he won against Liverpool, yeah, too, yeah. Uh, the draw against uh, Arsenal, uh, he locks the opponent out of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's unfortunate that tomorrow he may not have uh, Scott McTominay yeah. because if he had him, he's also a very good uh, midfield enforcer. Yeah. He'll neutralize the, the, the Chelsea midfield because the Chelsea midfield is so good. Uh, they have Kante, they have Kovacic, they have uh, Eugenio, mm -hmm. very good talents. And then uh, they have Alonso who is coming in from the wing and really attacking, uh, experienced, and um, that will cause problems for Manchester United. Wow. For, for Chelsea, where do you think it will be won? Of yeah. course, you have to go back to their defence because they don't have Thiago Silva. So maybe you're looking at a combination where you're going to see Zuma back in the team. You see Rudiger or even Aspilicueta playing in there. And then Kalu manson has been a man who, who has been talked about, especially for that performance against Southampton, where he's actually pulled off after only 33 minutes. Mm -hmm. We saw him play against Atletico Madrid. And listening to Thomas Tuchel, he said that he's a man now who's grown in confidence. He actually didn't get him up to at least spoil his name or take away his confidence. Yeah. And he got back into the team and played some very good football. So 
looking at the counter pressing that those two wing backs are doing there, Alonso on one side and Kalum Antonio on the other, it's going to be interesting to see what they are going to do in that match. Mm -hmm. And again, in the middle of the pack, we saw Kante play in one game. So many questions about really who Thomas Tuchel actually favours in the to team. Select. Yeah, and actually Timo Van again is another man we've seen somehow get some good form in, in the last few matches. So interesting whether it goes with Vana and Abraham or goes with Giroud and Vana. Well, that is our feature match for the touchline here. Chelsea versus Manchester United tomorrow. It will be a big one for both managers, for both teams and for the fans and to see how that match will be panning out. But we can also not live uh, without talking about another match. Briefly, we've got like five minutes to go on to the show here. But we've got Leicester playing home to Arsenal also. It is a big, big game. <laughs> uh, it's a big game and uh, without going into much, yeah. I'll put my money on Leicester. And uh, reason being precision. Yes. Precision. Mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Rodgers uh, is approaching the Premier League with one mind. Mm -hmm. We are going to win this. Yes. And uh, he has the players who are capable of, of doing that. And uh, he rested some of uh, uh, his big players over the weekend, over the in the in the midweek, mm -hmm. and uh, today they will be coming in definitely. Yeah. And um, you see now the problem with Arsenal is that um, they played their best players uh, 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 in the midweek because they really needed a win, and the fatigue may come in, and uh, they're unpredictable. Mm -hmm. They're unpredictable this season. Yeah. Today they'll be good, tomorrow they'll be poor, mm -hmm. and uh, if Leicester are able to take Saka out of the game, that is the end of Arsenal. Wow. I think I wouldn't be that confident about <laughs> Arsenal <laughs> losing that game, mm -hmm. because again, I watched Leicester City play against Lavia Praha, and you talk about some of the injuries they've got into their team. Madison, he just got injured. He had a hip injury. Yeah. And of course, you're talking about Justin, who is also missing. Perez is also missing. Fofana, some very huge names missing from that Leicester team. And looking at how they performed against Lavia Praha, even with Bans in the team, Vardy didn't look like himself. Madison looks to be one of the most influential guys in that pitch. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'll talk about an Arsenal team that is somehow got some confidence back. I saw some tweet by Piers Morgan actually talking about that being one of the best comebacks in European <laughs> football. Well, I don't know what he really meant about that because we've had some better like, Yeah, and that means the standard has gone so low that mm -hmm. winning against Benfica in the round of 32 is a big European comeback. But it's going to be a, a huge confidence boost for them because yeah. that's the only match I guess they've won coming back from a goal down apart from the Southampton game that they had. So mm -hmm. they'll actually feel like Aubameyang is now getting his groove back and then they've got Saka in there, they've got smith Rowe, Kerantin is back mm -hmm. fit. They'll fancy this and Vardy is one guy who loves scoring against us and also might, you might place him on your bookies to score. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to score. <laughs> and then we'll finish off with another big one there, Everton. After their win against Liverpool, now they are playing Southampton at home. And with Carlo Ancelotti with Everton, they are a confident side. They are comfortable of beating anyone in the, even in the Premier League. I think Everton takes points from the big uh, boys and gives it to the small boys. <laughs> <laughs> because there are games that uh, Everton uh, uh, loses and you wonder how did they lose yeah. this one. And uh, that's a problem uh, that Carlo Ancelotti uh, is supposed to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Southampton, they drew with Chel they drew the, 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 the other yeah, game and then they lost to, they lost to, to Leeds. To Leeds eh? mm. yeah. um, they are a team that is uh, comfortable and very compact. Uh, their main issue is if they score as the first ones, mm -hmm. then it becomes very difficult for them to concede. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think uh, Everton would give them that opportunity. Everton would like to come off the blocks and just uh, give them pressure because they know that uh, once they concede against Southampton, yeah. it will be, be very difficult to, to break them down. You remember there was a game uh, they scored uh, uh, they, they, they scored a goal in the third minute or second minute against mm -hmm. Liverpool and yeah, they held they it uh, uh, until one until the, 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 the last minute. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, the, that's their biggest uh, uh, strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, tomorrow, uh, 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 what Angelotti will be able to do is to avoid concede seeding yeah. uh, and um, score fast. And if they, 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 the Southampton uh, are able to, to concede fast, then they will lose the game. 
Yeah, wow. Again, it feels like a broken record every time when I have to say that. I have not found any manager yet who's lost 9-0 in two consecutive seasons <laughs> and still on a very wretched run and still doesn't get the stick. And Rafa Senehul, you look at the performances he's had in the last few matches, they have not been good really. And the game against Leeds United, he talked about not having the right players. And at the same time, he had the luxury to yeah. bench Danny Ings from the team. So coming into this match, I believe Everton are going to come in and think this is a game we should win really because they're on a bad run. They've got some injuries in there. Kyle Walker Peters has been a huge hit for that team. Yeah. And their defense with Ben Narek uh, has not been that good really this season. So Everton might look at it and Dominic Calvert-Lewin looking at that match might be licking his lips in there. It is going to be a very good match day weekend considering that now the second legs are starting being played out mm. as we head on to the... Let's look at some of the key players that we can be looking out this weekend, not only because of goals, but because of the assets that they offer on to the team. Some of the top assets coming on that side, you can see clearly Harry Kane with 11 for Tottenham. He's a player to watch this weekend. He's a player to watch because what, what Mourinho has done, and we have to give credit to him, uh, we've known Harry Kane to be a predator. We've mm. known Harry Kane to be scoring goals. Eh? Mm. But Mourinho has been able to interchange them uh, with Sun and uh, to find that uh, Harry Kane now can provide the assists. Yeah. And if you look at the assists there, uh, I would like to give credit to one, uh, to one uh, Kevin De Bruyne because yeah. uh, he's, uh, he has 10 and he's not uh, played he's for not quite played some for time. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that shows how good he is. Yeah. He's not played for quite some time mm -hmm. and he's still on the top uh, uh, four when it comes to, to, to the assists. Yeah. yeah, Bruno yeah. Fernandes there yeah. also. Yeah, I actually think Harry Kane will have a very good weekend playing against Burnley and then playing against Fulham. Yeah. Those are very nice fixtures playing against some two teams in the bottom six. Mm -hmm. But again, talking about Bruno Fernandes, I mean, he's the only guy who at least pulls the strings in that middle of the park. And I guess you saw that when Real Chelsea had played against United in the second half at Old Trafford. When he just gets out of the team, there is nothing that happens in there because Bruno Fernandes is such an influential player in that team. So credit to him. And also I've seen Luca Dini also in that mm -hmm. lineup in there. Yes. And also Aaron Creswell. So to see defenders actually being on that list is super impressive from them. Kudos to them. Well, big one when it comes to the English Premier League and some of the matches that will be coming your way. I know Chelsea will be on against Manchester United tomorrow. Some of the matches we have told you will be coming away. Man City will be kicking off this match day. And this is where we come to the end of the touchline. Eric Aganya, thanks you for coming to the touchline this Thank afternoon. You. How will you be spending your weekend, man? <laughs> it has already kicked uh, off. I, I just want to catch the Man City. <laughs> the Man <laughs> City, game. West Ham. <laughs> and then Sammy for you. Of course, mine is all about the NBA. NBA. Looking forward <laughs> yes, to, big to, one. Yeah, to the All-Star game next weekend. So yes. all about talking about the Celtics, uh -huh. how they've been on a wretched run, the Golden State Warriors winning games. So <laughs> it's really interesting and that's what I really do. I think watching we, everything, we, yeah. we need to have a segment for, the, for basketball, actually, considering that our country for the very first time in 28 years has managed to qualify for the Afro basketball that will be happening later on to the year. That is where we come to the end of the touchline. I'm Robert Osoro. Maxwell Wasika will be with us next week as we'll be dissecting everything that will be happening during the week when it comes to sports. For everyone who has managed to make this broadcast a success, we say good afternoon and enjoy the rest of your viewing here on Y254.